Mr Chair. The Honourable Hickey of Parata. Mr Chair, perhaps if I just start with that last question first, since the member had quite a catalogue of questions. Um, in terms of uh, safety, um, this is something that we are focused on all the time, even for the very connectedness of the face-to-face -face schools. And so a number of protocols and supervisory expectations are already applied to schools now, and I would expect that in the regulatory regime for calls, uh, those will also uh, be applied. In terms of uh, safety of kids, the Vulnerable Children's Act requires all those working with children to be vetted for safety uh, in terms of their, and that would be applied here. Um, in terms of the question around uh, registered teachers, um, state and private schools that establish uh, communities of learning will all be required to have registered teachers, as is the case now. For those that are not, this, the protocol that is current, the regime they're currently uh, established under will obtain in that case. In terms of registered teachers, just as it occurs now for partnership schools, the Minister can uh, specify a minimum of a percentage of teachers who much must be registered. Coming to a couple of questions, well actually an observation that Ms um, Martin made where uh, she was recommending that um, a, a particular approach to online learning but defining it as confined to within the sector, um, I think it just comes to, to a point that I don't agree that there isn't value to be gained from uh, drawing from the widest pool available. Um, I know now, uh, in fact, that not only New Zealand schools but schools worldwide uh, regularly access the Khan Academy, and that is a private provider, or in New Zealand Mind Lab, or the Coding Club, or many others that are not uh, within the sector but nevertheless provide really good quality learning. I don't see why we would confine um, the scope of our interest for New Zealand children uh, simply within the sector, and I think that applying a regime, a tough regime of selection, will ensure that the best quality uh, is achieved for our young people. Um, to go back to Mr Hipkins' questions about the OIA and the Ombudsman, uh, the approach we're taking here is those accountabilities that currently apply to different categories of schools will consistently apply. And so for those uh, that are uh, where, where businesses uh, may be involved and they are not caught by those provisions and they are approved because they meet the regime, then the accountabilities relative to them uh, will be applied. Um, right. Uh, oh, now the member um, um, may have misapprehended the law in New Zealand, um, but there, uh, there is no protection from being judicially reviewed. And so uh, a Minister of Education and a um, experience I have become regrettably somewhat familiar with, uh, can all, the public can be assured that they will retain the right to review a decision of a Minister of Education, or indeed any Minister, and that's as it should be. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, fees. Sorry, not, I beg your pardon. <laughs> I beg your pardon. It's just that it's just that you you some of you have asked similar questions and I have answered them and I apologise to the house. Um, so coming to uh, fees, regulations will be set out for these about what can be charged. Uh, for example, Takura can currently charge some students and does. Uh, private providers will also be able to do that, but again, that will be something that is contested in the setting of the regime and in the accreditation. And finally, I will repeat, no, not finally, uh, the member was also concerned about the going outside the New Zealand curriculum. Well, we already have the case in New Zealand where schools offer the Cambridge exam or they offer the International Black Baccalaureate, and those are outside the New Zealand uh, curriculum. We also have Kura who offer Te Ahomatua, which is not exactly Te Marotanga, but it's outside in some regards. It's additional too, that's right. And we're not suggesting that you know, we, we are looking to actively find outside the curriculum, but I just want to remind the member that that diversity already exists in the system, and by introducing communities of online learning, we're not introducing a new dimension that is not already at play. And then the two, one penultimate, um, parents choose. 
Nothing in this bill is saying a parent must use this type of school or that type of school. Parents know their children best, Mr Chair, know their children best and will pick the best option and the best mix of options for them. And rural schools, this is a challenge to us whether we have communities of online learning or not. When, you know, the shepherd leaves with her four kids, you know, that could take two thirds of the kids from a school. And one of the best uh, solutions we've found for this, or we're putting in place, um, is not only to be able to connect in uh, by broadband and so forth, but it is also the communities of learning, so that they are part of a much bigger critical mass that gives them greater likelihood of being able to survive. So it is an ongoing challenge, and none of us have yet hit on exactly the right recipe to resolve that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Catherine Dillahunty. This is just going to be a very brief response. Because